Hello everyone, welcome to Johnny's NASDAQ YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to continue to show the last part of my lab to let remote AAD joint machine access Azure storage file share. In my previous lab, we already set up remote AAD joint machine. We already created Azure Cloud Virtual Machine and also did cloud tiering for the Azure storage file shares. In this lab, I'm going to show you how to set up P2S VPN by using a VPN gateway. Now, let's start it. In previous two labs, we already created the AAD user and have remote Windows client joined into AAD, used the Windows 10 and the Windows 11 as an example. We also create the Azure storage file shares and then mount them to a Azure AAD joint VN with tiered sync enabled. So my last step is to create in a Azure P2S VPN and then install agent, connect to VPN, and the remote Windows machine can use this VPN to access Azure file share folders. So there's four steps listing for this lab. This is our virtual machine created in Azure environment. I have a local AD joined machine. Azure AD joined machine. We're going to access it using pin code. As you can see, we logged in as test2, which is AD joined machine. We're going to access our VM in Azure using MSTSC. Same thing, we're going to using pin code to log in. Now I want to show you the cloud tiered setup. So we have our share folder one, file share one, which is mapping to our Azure storage file shares using storage sync service. So we have three ISO files uploaded before. So those three files now is cached here, but only take a couple bytes here, storage, zero bytes. So the file itself has been synced to the storage file share. On a local VM disk, it's almost taking nothing space on the local. But when you access it, it will automatically redirect you to the storage file share. So now let's start to create in a Azure Virtual Network Gateway. So we're going to use basic since we are testing. We're going to use an existing VNet and you can set up your subnet address. Since this is VPN, I want to use 250, which is um, almost the last subnet in the network. You can use in 254, but I will leave some space there. So we're going to need a public address. So like VPN agent client can connect to this public IP. PIP, then that's it. Then we can review and create. I will come back once the deployment completed. So finally, the deployment completed. It does take some time, about 35, 40 minutes. Let's go to resources. So we are going to create a point to side configuration. So we can configure it now. You can see this address pool. So just 
be careful when you're creating a dress pool, you don't want to create any confliction with your local network. For example, I'm using 192.168.2 network. You also don't want to create a confliction with your cloud network, which is 10.0.0.0/16. So we're gonna use 72 IP. Then we need a root certificate here. We don't have any yet. So we can just uh, save the configuration, then we will configure it later. For anyone who want to know how to configure certificate, how to generate your root certificate, how to generate your client certificate, Microsoft has a nice KB for that. I also has a blog post to introduce use those concepts and the steps here. So you can use make cert list utility to generate your certificate. You also can use PowerShell to do that. So we can generate client certificate and then create a self-signed root certificate. So I'm gonna post those links into my video description. You can check it out once you've finished watching the video. The steps are very straightforward. Copy the PowerShell command to generate the self-signed root certificate. You may want to run it as your administrator. Then you can paste the command. And then we can check out the certificate, use the command. P2S load certificate. That's the one we generated. So we now we have one load certificate. Go back to the guide. We're going to generate our second certificate that for client. Since our PowerShell session is still open, so we can use this command to generate our client certificate. If you are generating your client certificate later, we will be allowed root certification console session. And then you need to follow the step to get the some print for your root certificate and then you can use the command to generate your client certificate but that will be different case for our session we can just quickly copy the command to generate our client certificate so we have new client child cert certificate let's refresh here so we have two certificates on the personal certificate folder, one root certificate, one child certificate. So the root certificate we're gonna upload to our virtual network gateway to complete our point to site configuration. To do that, we will need to generate the valid format to import it. So what we can do here is we're going to export it whole task, export, next. We don't need the private key. We need a base64 encoded x.509 format. Give it a name. We're going to save it on the desktop, which is our P2S root. Certificate. Next. Finish. So we're going to create uh, our root certificate on our VNG uh, test file share dash one, this virtual network gateway. We're going to give a name P2S root cert. 
and let's our third information so we can copy this in and then save it so when you copy the certificate content don't copy the first line and the last line so basically you can open it with your local pad and copy the content between those two li first line and last line so now we have our root certificate created the next step is for client certificate so in in this case we already have client certificate installed here if you want to give it to another machine to run then you may want to export it as well so we're going to do the same thing export but with different steps next export the private key default settings no change and you want to put the password here without the password we cannot go forward confirm the password as well next client cert next So right now I'm gonna simulate and we delete this certificate since we already generated our new one. So we have root, we have client. So assuming this is a new machine, we're gonna install it. We're gonna install for calendar user. Here is the certificate coming from. It's asking the password. Next. Finish. Yes, the import was successful. That's going to refresh here. So this certificate is come back. Now we got everything configured properly. Now we should be able to download it, download our VPN client. And then we're going to run this VPN client from our Windows 10 machine to connecting to this virtual network gateway. Since it's a ESE file, so you get a, we're going to get this warning message. You can open this zip file here. So what we need is Windows AMD 64 bit folder. So this is exe file we can uh, copy into Windows 10, Windows 11 machine. So this is exe file for the VPN client. Double click to install it. The installation window gonna disappear by itself, but you should be able to find it from uh, network. You may want to create a shortcut on your desktop. And VPN connection, connect. This Azure VPN window is going to show up. Just click connect. Don't show it again. Once it's connected, the window is going to disappear again. One thing I want to show you is the IP address. As you can see, for the VPN, we created um, IP space 172.16.0.0 slash 24. But now we are getting 0 0.2 this IP since 0 0.1 has been assigned to the VPN gateway itself. Our next step is gonna connect into our file server. So let's look at the file server's IP address 10.0.0.4. That's okay. We try to pin. Yeah, we are able to reach our Azure file server VM. Of course, at the same time, we should be able to see the file shares. So, of course, it's going to ask you for the authentication. Once you type the pin code, then you are able to access the files on the file share. 
you can see the size here that the files we copied on the VM's local folder. Um, you can quickly drag it down to copy it. The speed is going to be limited by your ISP speed. So my ISP speed isn't that fast. So you can see that the speed is about uh, 3 megabytes. That's a full concept how you can use AAD users to access your storage file shares. And this is all labs I'm going to show you. Hope you enjoyed the lab and hope you find something interesting here. Uh, if you do, please give me a thumb up. Also, if you like my channel, you want to get more updates, please subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. See you in my next episode.